once we have the raster file created um, by default it gives us a color scheme to sort of indicate the elevation change and the elevation um, scheme runs from this dark green all the way to this white, the white in indicating higher elevation, sort of what you'd expect on mountaintops. It's sort of inappropriate here because of course the elevations we're dealing with are quite small, but in any case it's supposed to give you the sense of the range. These values are again in meters above sea level and this we know from the metadata that we read about when we first acquired the DTM files. However, we can inspect the properties of this raster that we just created to get a sense of, of what it is and, and what it's telling us. And we can access those properties the same way we do with any feature class. We can either double click on the file in the table of contents or go to the properties. And we can see right here that it's classified um, the uh, elevation ranges uh, using a default method. We'll come back to that in a second. First, we want to look at the source um, tab to look at the data. So the source uh, tab in the, for a raster uh, feature class tells us uh, about that feature class, about the raster. So this information here tells us how the raster is composed or how it's built. So it's got 1,641 columns and rows. So again, it's still a grid. So those columns and rows refer to that grid. The cell size tells you the resolution. So it's that means that it's 5 meters by 5 meters each cell. So we'd say the resolution of this uh, ra raster is 5 meters. What it means is that each cell is 25, covers 25 square meters of area since you've got length time width to get the area. Uh, it tells the size. It's an image type which is the type of uh, raster format. It's 32-bit floating point which is simply tells us the range of or the, the size of the numbers that, that each cell can accommodate. Uh, floating point again indicating that it can deal with decimal points rather than say an integer which would deal with whole numbers. Um, in some cases there are going to be some cells that have no data in them and that's indicated if they have a value that says minus 3.4 and it's got a bunch of um, extra digits in here but that just means there's no data in there. Um, we have the extent which represents the uh, coordinates of the corners of the coordinate of the raster. We have the co uh, coordinate system, which is important to remember. Uh, and then we have this really important here, the linear unit, which refers to the coordinate system that the raster is in, because state plane always uses meters. It also tells us the uh, how we calculate the resolution. So you notice at the top we saw this um, cell size 5 by 5, it doesn't say what units, but it has to be meters because that is the linear unit that's, that we're using with this uh, raster and it's also the coordinate system. And lastly, uh, one of the things that I'm going to ask you for in terms of your community are these, are these um, statistics about the raster. So for the whole raster, which encompasses not just our community but some surrounding areas, these are the, this is the average elevation value, the average pixel value across the entire scene. This is the maximum, the highest, meaning in this case the highest elevation, and this is the minimum or the lowest elevation across the entire scene. And so these statistics give, give, give us a sense of the area as a whole, although, although they're fairly generalized. We can derive these also just for our community if we want. So I want to change the symbology for this to look more closely at uh, what this raster is. So I'm going to switch it from classified to stretched and I'm going to stick with the um, color scheme, the elevation color scheme. It's kind of this middle one that goes from uh, kind of a light light blue through reddish orange and then to white. And by default it gives the blue the lowest elevation indicating water and the highest white. And when we apply that, we can see it in a slightly different perspective. One of the more interesting visual um, products that can be created from a raster file once we have it is what's called a hillshade. And a hillshade essentially is a modeled scene that um, creates a scenario in which you can imagine sunlight falling across the landscape at an angle revealing shadows that then show you, uh, kind of highlight the topography. And we can easily create that once we have a raster um, elevation map. And so we're going to go back to the Arc Toolbox again for a second. And under the Spatial Analyst Tools, we're going to look for um, Surface. And in the Surface Toolbox, we're going to find a tool called Hillshade. 
And if you activate that tool and then put in your raster, okay, it's going to create a new raster called a hillshade. And what it's going to do is it's going to model what this landscape would look like if the sun or, sun or some light was shining on it from the northwest approximately 45 degrees above the horizon. And you can, you can alter these parameters. But when we take the defaults and look at that process, what we get is something that looks kind of like this clay surface. Um, and the neat thing about it is that it kind of highlights um, the landscape a little more. It's a little easier to see what's going on. One of the neat things that you can do with this, of course, is that you can use this underneath other maps to kind of give them a 3D-ish look. And the way that works essentially is that you take another layer that you want to use and you go to the properties that layer and in the display tab you can alter the transparency. So if you, for example, in this case we put 50% transparency on that, look at that, we can see the colors overlaid on top of that uh, hillshade. So it gives it both the color and a little bit of that 3D-ish effect um, to kind of highlight the topography of the area. And that's for visualization, uh, visualization purposes primarily. Okay, what we want to do though, finally, is we want to isolate the um, raster so that it just falls within our community of interest, which is Marblehead. And so I'm going to bring Marblehead up for a second so we can see it. And I'm going to make it hollow make the outline a little bit thicker so it's apparent. And I want to isolate just this part that falls within Marblehead for, for modeling purposes, which also saves time in processing later on. And the way that we do that is that we extract the or clip the raster, and we use the polygon of Marblehead as a, what we call a mask. So to do that, we go to the Arc Toolbox again. And this time, we're going to be, oops, don't need that now. We're going to be going to the Spatial Analyst Tools again, and this time to Extraction, and then Extract by Mask. So we double click on that tool, and the input raster is our um, the inverse distance weighted Marblehead raster. Don't don't use the hill shade, and then there. so then we want the Marblehead boundary to be our mask data, our input. And so this is going to be the thing that defines what gets extracted. So um, the output of that will be a raster, but it'll be only that raster cells that fall within marble boundary. So I'm going to rename this just a bit. Let's do that. Marblehead elevation. Okay. And that'll be the new raster that we want to work with. So that's all you need, and you hit OK. And then what you'll get is a new raster that consists only of the area within Marblehead. Let me close that for a second, and you can see that, and it differs from the others. Now you can do the same thing as we did before. You can create a hillshade from this uh, new raster from Marblehead, and you can also uh, change the symbology or, or the color scheme so that it looks a little different. Uh, the other thing you can do too, and which I'm going to ask for, in is the statistics. You can tell by the range here on the table of contents that the, the lowest elevation is slightly below sea level and the highest elevation is about 35 meters above sea level. Um, if you go to the properties for this layer as well and the source, you can also investigate the um, other statistics like for example the mean. So we have the average elevation of this raster as well. So there you have it. Then we have our raster for Marblehead and now we can use that for making a map.